Howdy again, it's Jubal Kane, and this time with episode number 13 of What Makes It Work. And the subject here is a bicycle coaster brake. Now the regular coaster brake that are on the older style bikes, you can still buy them, but uh, it's kind of a thing of the past because most bikes are 5 speed or 10 speed or 15 or other some other unnecessary uh, gear ratio you don't need, but uh, coaster brakes were invented over a hundred years ago and really are the handiest thing because they allow you to pedal when you want to, coast when you want to, and then by just reversing the rotation of your pedals you have a brake. So it's really a wonderful system. So let's take a look at uh, what makes these work and there are probably many different patents on these and uh, they're going to vary a little bit but uh, I'm going to uh, take one apart and examine it, so stay with me. This is my grandson's bike, and he's outgrown it, my smaller grandson, and moving up to another bike, so this one I suppose will be out in the curb pretty soon because we throw everything away here in America when we're tired of it or outgrow it. But what you're seeing here is the hub itself with the coaster brake inside of it, and spokes uh, radiating to the rim and, and then uh, the tire. And this tire is flat. I think that's why he quit driving it, riding it. But right here is the uh, brake lever. And that's normally held onto the bicycle frame with a strap. Now, when we were boys, often we must have done some pretty hard braking because these would break and you could buy a new one down at Royal Auto for a dime but you had to get down there and uh, and, make, and uh, buy it so we'd make our own out of heavier iron and then they held and that, the job was done but on this brake lever here or brake arm was the manufacturer and in this particular case this one I can't even read it but it says made in China but most of them were made uh, uh, in America well they were all made in America and Bendix and New Departure were the major ones that I remember and here's another hub and a coaster brake from another bike that I found on the curb and it had a bent wheel so I cut all the spokes off and have just the uh, the coaster brake here so let's go down to the basement and get ready to take this apart I guess I forgot to tell you that the brake arm here, of course, has to be fastened to the frame or it will spin around and then you have no brake. So that's why I made a big deal about telling you that it needed to be repaired. But if you'll notice on this one, as if the metal isn't thin enough to start with, they got a slot right there. So the, the strength of it uh, is greatly reduced and it's going to fail right there. I got sidetracked here. I'm down in the basement now and Jordan just showed up and he's running my little St. Louis electric motor. Say hi to the camera, Jordan. Hi. I've got two of these that can be set up in different configurations. That's right, swing it around. This is just on a 6-volt lantern battery. I don't think you can even get dry cells anymore. We used to use dry cells when we were, we were kids. These are fun to play with. I might do a video on these sometimes. They're called a St. Louis motor. But why I'm really here is to look at the coaster brake. I've got the arm of the coaster brake in the uh, vise now. And just to review here real quickly, I've had this open before and I've cleaned it because if you ever open one of these, they are just filled with filthy black grease. So that's all been cleaned. But with the brake arm held in a fixed position. In review here you can see that when you pedal the sprocket turns and the hub turns meaning that the wheel turns. When you back off just a little bit and stop pedaling the wheel is free to coast or free wheel. And when you back it up just a quarter of a turn you've got a brake in either the forward or reverse direction because sometimes you stop on a hill and you tend to back up a little bit but that'll hold you in place. So again that's what the coaster brake does. Now if you remember when you were a kid riding a tricycle and I remember this distinctly when you were five years old you couldn't ride a two-wheeler yet and the pedals were fixed directly to the wheel 
and you'd pedal as fast as you could and then you'd take your feet off and coast but of course the pedals and the crank were going full speed and it would hit you in the shin so that's why these uh, small children have black and blue shins but the coaster brake did away with that and uh, just uh, for your personal reference, there's really three things that were required before bicycles could be made, mass-produced, and fairly cheaply, and that caused a bicycle craze in, in the 1890s, I think it was. But what do you think those three things were that allowed them to make bicycles? Really three things uh, that were required. One, ball bearings, cheap ball bearings, and there's three ball bearings in uh, this axle. Also, steel tubing. It was uh, fairly recently, 110, 120 years ago, when they first could start making steel tubing and fasten it, usually by brazing then rather than electric welding. And third was rubber tires. We had to have balloon tires to make these things rideable. Before that, if you've seen in the museums where they were making bicycles without a coaster brake, and with wagon wheels, basically uh, wooden wheels with steel tires. So imagine riding one of those on cobblestone streets. So just a little uh, related information of the Industrial Revolution. So now I'll take this coaster brake apart and we'll see what's inside. I just had a flashback in my memory when I was looking at this. When we were kids, uh, this was fastened to the bicycle with the strap there and the spacing here was just right and we used that for a bottle opener when we bought a bottle of pop for a nickel well I've been flashing back too much related too much information alright let's take this apart it's been apart as I told you or it would be just a terrible mess just filled with with grease black grease and uh, I, I've had it apart I've cleaned it real well and thinner so I wouldn't have a mess so let's see what we got Take the nut off. Of course, there were other nuts and washers that held this to the bicycle, too. And here's the brake arm. Notice that it's got a rectangular slot that is fastened to this piece here. This is just a dust cover. One on the other side, too, I believe. And then uh, as we take this uh, cone out of here, I guess we can call that a cone, That's a fine thread, so it takes a little while to get it out of there. But as you see this backing out now, you can see that we got a, a bearing in here, another bearing here, and uh, a bearing right here. And then right inside here are the brake shoes, two tiny little brake shoes. And they have to be spaced just so. So let me get that backed out. And get back to you. This isn't something that children should take apart because they'll never get it back together. But that bearing just fits in there like that. And I do not know the name of all these parts. But I'm going to call this the driver. And let me... There's the brake shoes. If I pull this out... Got all kinds of parts falling out now. Again, this is uh, the hub, but it also is the brake drum. So these little brake shoes here expand. They fit right in here, and they expand to, uh, in other words, like that, to stop the bike. And so that's all you need, and it's metal on metal, and it's filled with grease. So you would think that wouldn't have much uh, stopping power, but it sure does. And we like to skid those bikes, and we sure wore out a lot of brakes when we were kids. Now one end here is a little bit different than the other. Uh, again, let me say that uh, there's probably uh, dozens and dozens of different patents and variations on this, but the principle is probably pretty much the same. Th this, of course, is Chinese. Or did I say, uh, pretty hard to read, yeah, Taiwan is what it says here, someplace, yeah, Taiwan. 
on the sprocket end here, I'm not going to take the sprocket off, but you can see that there's a uh, like a snap ring there, but actually it's just a, a wire ring that can be taken off to change the sprockets or remove the sprockets. And then we've got a bearing here in here along with a cone. Spins very freely. But what is really unique in here, there's another dust cup there, is that this thread here almost doesn't look like a thread, but this is a six start thread. Yes, yeah, six. S-I-X. And I made a little mark there where each thread starts, and I've talked about multiple start threads in, in other videos, so you can go back and look at that. But there's zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six, um, six threads. But the purpose of that is that when uh, this part screws on, this cone screws on, notice that just about a quarter turn here moves this part oh five eighths of an inch or so so you, the, the more threads you have the quicker the action and that's what uh, allows the braking when you turn it backwards when we turn the sprocket backwards the crank backwards like that can you see that it's moving this out and if I can put this part on, again we got a fine thread. And the driver here, this little slot has to go into this spring here. That's what's tricky when you reassemble these. Okay, I got that on there now. And then the brake shoes. fit right here one in each side so that when you back that up you can see that this is expanding like that pushing against the, uh, the shoe and the shoe is tapered on both ends and that allows the shoe to expand inside the drum so that's the general principle of the whole thing and that uh, when it backs out we can coast. So we got coasting, we've got driving, and we got brakes all in the coaster brake. This hub was incredibly hard. I thought I would just saw through it or mill through it and it, it must be 60 Rockwell hardness. And that really surprised me. So it took me over an hour of grinding with a little uh, grinding wheel to get that out of there. but. Uh, before I put it back together, take a look at now at the cross section here. How much thicker it is right here than out here. And this area right here is what does the, uh, the driving. And it's, we got teeth here, or it's serrated, so it's gripping right on that shiny part right there when, when we drive it. It's jamming itself into there. And then when we reverse the pedals, it goes the other way, and uh, these other little serrations here are what are expanding the brake shoes. Let's put this uh, inside of there, and I think you can see now how that will do the driving. And then it'll back off a little bit when we brake and when we coast free wheel now let me put it together and we have a cutaway a tubal cane cutaway my oh my how that chrome reflects the light it's kind of difficult to photograph but the portion here uh, this flange here that holds the spokes uh, is pressed on and that was soft steel and Ta-da, there's the cutaway. And now you can see in here, I believe, that uh, when this cone here, whatever we call it, is in more or less the neutral position, it is neither driving nor braking, that the drum 
the hub is free to turn and the sprocket is not turning now. So we're coasting. In other words, this is a neutral. Now when the uh, crank, we start pedaling, watch how that six start thread there jams this cone into that uh, female cone and that's what drives it. I do remember sometimes children having uh, uh, trouble and their pedals slipped and that must have been what was the matter who didn't know as a child. Now when I reverse the pedals sprocket goes the other way you can see the brake shoes expanding. This one's expanding a little too far now because because of the cutaway. There's the braking position and the hub is locked onto the uh, sprocket. Got the axles laying here in a little V block so you can visualize that. So again, reviewing here. Get your kids in here to see this. This is a first for YouTube, by the way, I think. Driving, it's jamming the cone in. Back off a little bit. The cone is in neutral, hub free to spin, back it up, and the brake shoes are expanding just like in a car, and gripping the hub. Now I might have said something incorrectly earlier in the video about a driver in here, those springs, that, that was not true, and uh, I've been enlightened a, a little bit too by uh, examining this how, and to see how it works, and now it's pretty obvious with the cutaway, so I'm glad I took the time to make that cutaway, and I am a big fan of cutaways in case you, in case you have not noticed. So that completes this video on the coaster break. I hope this has been enjoyable for you and this hasn't got too long. And if you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like them, well, give me a thumbs down, I guess. There's sure enough people doing that anyway. And be sure and watch my next videos. Watch the past videos in this series. They've been pretty popular. And I think i got some good ones planned in the future, too. So... This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.